So welcome to Sexual Integrity and Restoration. And um, we're talking about sex, a place for, welcome to Sexual Integrity and Restoration. Uh, this is the place for real talk, for real people looking for real answers. Um, I'm going through this series on sex and it's candid discussion about sex. You can handle it, real talk. And um, it surprises me how many uh, lay people you know, from chaplains, you know, commissioned to uh, pastors off base, uh, community pastors, avoid this topic of sex. Uh, at one point, uh, I was called to share a lot of this information with um, uh, many of the chaplains on the island. And um, uh, I had an opportunity to speak to an 05 and, and began to share some of the content. And this 05 literally, he's probably 55 years old, uh, literally, put his fingers in his ears and said, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe that you said the vagina word. You said the V word. I can't do that. I can't say that. And um, he was embarrassed that I had said that word. And uh, it, it got to stop down. People are hurting and people are in trouble and people, uh, many people are really looking for answers. The Bible has the answers to sex. God created sex. He's the author of it. And that's why I call this divine Divine, divine divine design for sex. And so let's jump into this. So there I was. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I happened to be uh, at a credit union on one of the bases here. And uh, we had a relationship. Uh, me and a friend of mine, we were standing there. We had a relationship uh, um, with, we had been kind of discipling this woman at the, the counter. She's a teller. And we get to talk and I ask her how things are going. And she almost broke down and started crying. She said, I'm getting a divorce. I filed for a divorce and caught by surprise. I said, what are you talking about? And she says, I uh, found out a few months ago that my husband was watching pornography. And she says, I've tried working with him and I caught him again. He won't quit pornography. And then she said this, she says, I will not compete with porn. And as far as I know, they ended up getting a divorce. We had, uh, this has happened frequently also. We had another young man about a year ago, um, this guy used to come out to our Bible studies the whole night in the church, uh, struggling with porn, but, uh, you know, we're working with him. What ends up happening, he gets married and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he gets married and within, within the first 30 months, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, within the first 30 days, the first month of marriage, he asks his wife to participate in a threesome. And within this, this first month, they're separated and they, they both filed for divorce because this guy had this secret head. He had this fantasy. I don't know what he was thinking that, um, what, what was he thinking? We'll get into that in a minute because the topic of today's conversation is ideas. You know, you know, what's the big idea? And I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Before we get started, let's go to Genesis chapter two, and then I'm going to pray for you. Genesis chapter two, verse 21. We'll start reading there. Genesis chapter two, verse 21 says, so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, uh, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. Verse 22, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. 23, then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 25. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. So let me pray over you. As a father, I thank you, Lord. And I can speak over these people right now that are listening and watching. Father, I thank you that they know, these men and women know that your will is that they should uh, be sanctified by avoiding all sexual immorality. And Father, I pray that these men and women learn to control and possess their own bodies in a way that is holy, honorable, and pleasing to you, Lord. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that these men and women know greatly that it's in patience. Jesus said this, in patience we possess our souls. And so, Father, these men and women know in patience they will possess their souls, but in impatience, they can lose their souls, Lord. Father, I thank you. These men and women know that their bodies are members of Christ. 
Christ himself. Therefore, these people will not take their members of the members of Christ and unite themselves with a prostitute. Never, because these men and women know that whoever unites himself with a prostitute is one with them in spirit. And Father, I thank you that they know, Father, that, that, that because they become one with them in body, Father, it is written that the two shall become um, one flesh, but these men and women know that whoever unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And so, Father, I thank you that these men and women flee from sexual immorality. They, they know that all of the sins a person commits are outside of their own bodies, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own bodies, Father. And Father, I thank you that these men and women know that their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in them. These men and women are not their own, and they know this. They know that they've been brought with a price. Therefore, these men and women will honor God. They will honor you, Lord. With their bodies in jesus name i pray amen so before i jump into this uh by way of announcements <clears throat> just to let you know i um, um we gravitated into uh facebook live broadcasts and so i do broadcasts i should be doing four times a week to include the wednesday night brig ministry i haven't gotten into that yet i only do three times a week i do mondays fridays and saturdays um um, so, so keep your eyes open, check it out. You know, you guys know me, I, not a whole lot of fluff. We just dive right into t the content. Uh, also, I would be remiss if I didn't remind you of uh, Sunday chapel services with Chaplain Allen. That man's on fire for the Lord. The man loves the Lord. And uh, he's, he's, he's got a good message on Sundays on Facebook Live also. So be looking for him. Um, or I'd ask, invite you to subscribe. You know, I, ha I have a blog. I've archived many of my newsletters. They're, they're brief and they're very popular. And they're no fluff, no sugar coat, and they're just bottom line. Um, don't like to waste time. But you can subscribe at my blog. It's called, uh, the website is zcdc.wordpress.com. zcdc.wordpress.com. That stands for Zebulon Christian Discipleship Center. Um, I also have a YouTube channel. It's called Yahweh Has a Son. One word. Search YouTube for Yahweh has a son. I have uh, several videos out there. Some are long, some are short, but they're all full of meat. Um, the last thing I want to share with you by way of announcements is um, financial support. As full-time missionaries out here, we ask that you pray about supporting us financially. If you if you sow into what we're doing out here, because we're about the Father's business, you become a benefactor of the fruit that's being harvested over here. And trust me, there's a lot of fruit being harvested. We make disciples. And you can help us. You can also store up treasures in heaven this way. By sowing into this, helping us do this work over here, you get credit. Philippians talks about this. And if you have questions, contact me. Um, I tell people, try not to talk about me, rather talk to me. And then you can talk about me. <laughs> so there's different ways to give. You can give uh, online through our missions organization, Christians in Action. Um, they are at uh, cnme.org. Um, that's C I N A uh, M I dot O R G C I N A M I dot O R G and then search for the missionaries and you can support that way or you can electronic funds into the church account. And I'll, I'll post that in the comments after the, the broadcast. So let's jump into this. There's this thing, um, an acronym I came up with while studying this stuff out, uh, um, it's called IDEAS, I-D-E-A-S. And I'll explain that in just a moment. Turn to 1 Thessalonians. We're going to read two passages of Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And verses 3 and 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. This has kind of been foundational Scripture that I've been using in this series. Uh, sex is such a broad topic, and it can take so many different directions. And, and the conversations that I've had in conferences, in, in Brig Ministries, in some of our discipling courses, um, we have great conversations. And I will say this, uh, and, I, and I explain this to the people that we talk to, that um, to a large degree, I am not an authority on this topic of sex. But what I do know, I know some things about sex, and I know the Word of God. And so what I'm here to tell you is that uh, my experiences and with the word of God and, and with the sex stuff, uh, God has shown me quite a bit. And I'll share this with you here shortly. So verse uh, first Thessalonians chapter four, verses three and four. It says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, 
and verse 4, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and in honor. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you would abstain from fornication and that you would know how to possess your vessel in sanctification and in honor. Now, I want you to go back a couple of books to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> and I'm going to read in verse 18, I believe. So I'll make sure. Yeah, verse 18, 19, and 20. It reads, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 reads, Flee from sexual immorality. Uh, every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Now the King Jimmy reads, really simply, flee fornication, because this is what does it have to do with pornography? I'll explain in a minute. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Well, that word there, fornication, in both those passages, same word. It's the Greek word, uh, pornea. And that's where we get the word pornography from. And a lot of people today will sit there and say, well, uh, pornography is recreational. It's, it's a legitimate outlet. It's harmless. There's some victims, all of which are a lie. I'll get some more lies of pornography in a second. But um, if, if, if when people ask, you know, is pornography harmful or not? Is it okay? Is it permissible? Well, just look at the definition of the word. You know, it's, it's pornea. And the fornication is Greek word pornea, and we get the word pornography from it. And I've told you guys this before. It's basically a compound word. You take two words, porn and graph, and then put them together and figure out what it's saying. Well, porn means illicit, illicit, deviant, lewd, sinful, ungodly sex. Graph is images and pictures. And so if you put the two together, illicit, deviant, lewd, sinful, ungodly sex, pictures of this stuff. It's ungodly. It's wicked. And God says, don't do it. And so um, today's uh, Webster's defines pornography. If you look this up in some places, Webster's defines pornography as something really, really bland and, and just really gentle. It says it's only that which is designed to arouse sexually. That which is designed to arouse sexually. Well, no, uh, because the reason why I got to stress this is because People can dress pornographically, and it's designed to arouse sexually. However, there's more to it. God says there's a lot more to that. Basically, if 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 you see um, uh, women with with tight je tight jeans or the low cut, low hips, and they got the little string thing hanging out the backside there, um, I, I won't tell you what the prisoners call them. Just ask someone; they'll tell you. Um, and then they have the tattoo down there that goes right down in the back. Um, what's that there for? What's the point of that? That which is designed to arouse sexually? No, it's a lot more than that. It's 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 a picture. It's an image of, and this is where I'm going to go with ideas. It's an image of illicit, deviant, lewd, ungodly, sinful sex. That's what it is. It's 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 she's fishing, and guys can dress porn, pornographically too. Guys can dress lewdly too. You know, I've, I've seen guys with tight, really tight pants and, and speedos and whatnot. And um, I don't want to get started on that. Uh, and when everyone has seen pornography, some form of pornography, even if you haven't been on the Internet, you've seen some degree of pornography. Uh, uh, the way people dress, uh, music videos, commercials. It's, it's everywhere. If, it, if it's relating to sex and the spirit behind it, because there, there was an argument, of, um, well, isn't uh, naked pictures of, of the statue of Venus and, and uh, Michelangelo and, and these naked pictures, uh, what's the difference between that and modern day art? If you can't figure that out, you need to grow up. The difference is the spirit behind the intent of that. 
one was glorifying the beauty of the human body. The other one is absolutely, without a doubt, lusting over the human body. One was spirit, one was flesh. You need to be able to recognize flesh. Go read Hebrews 5, the end of chapter 5 there, about milk and meat and being able to discern. And it says those that are mature can discern right from wrong. You look at that and say, yeah, that's wrong. Pornography is wrong. Some people will argue it's just art. It's not art. Because what's the spirit behind that pornography? It's to entice your flesh. It's, it's, it's to produce flesh in you. Flesh is bad. I can really talk about that. So if you've watched pornography and, and you have, you've seen all kinds of pornography. There's really, out of, out of all the missions and efforts of pornography, the goals of pornography, I can name the two, probably I can argue the two most fundamental messages of pornography. This is the messages pornography tries to communicate. And these are probably the, the top two. Uh, number one, it's that um, <clears throat> you can have sex without love. One of the biggest messages about porn is, is it's possible that you can successfully have sex without love. You don't need love to have sex. Just engage in the act and you'll be okay. It's, and you can get away with it. It's not true. That's not how God created it. God created sex to connect you, to bind you. I'll prove that in a minute. And so, so uh, honestly, those of you that have dealt with porn or dealt with multiple sexual partners, many of you would, would admit to me and admit to someone else, admit to yourself that you've been sexually active, but you're not fulfilled. It's irritating. It's unfulfilling. There's something missing, and you know there's something missing. I can't tell you how many people we've talked about that got in trouble, and they're at the brig, and they, they say they will go sexually, uh, physically through the motions, and it was not It was never enough. They were still looking for something else, and they could never find out what that thing was. It has to be genuine love, and, and more to that, too. Um, so that's one message, that you can have sex without love. I'm here to tell you, it, sex and love you got to have it together. And if, if you don't have the love and just having the sex, it's animalistic and you'll never be fulfilled. Uh, the second message is that, um, and this is a tough one, uh, that number two, that women secretly crave sex. And if you've seen any kind of porn, it's usually the woman uh, who gets turned on when, when, when she's touched in the right place or when she sees the right things, she gets turned on. And so women want it just as bad as men. This is a lie. This is a huge lie of pornography. And I got so many men that fall into this and they think they're so immersed in this pornography that I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I got to say this, that they, they, they're they so immersed in pornography that all pornography is fantasy. And they have that so much on the brain that fantasy begins to replace reality. And they think what I see in porn is what women want. It's not true. And these women that are getting addicted to porn, that's not what they want either. And so um, <clears throat> the message that women secretly crave sex is a lie. Not the, 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 the sex they have, that they crave oftentimes is more mental. I've, I, we, Sandy and I have, have, have talked to multiple, countless women over the, over the years, and we've learned this even from personal experience that uh, oftentimes uh, women, they often just want a touch. They just want companionship. So they'll give up the sex to get the touch. Uh, men want the sex. And so they'll go ahead. It, it's been said that um, women use uh, uh, sex to get love and men use love to get sex. It's kind of true. And so when we believe that these women, they think about sex as much as we do, then we buy into this lie and we think all I have to do is touch the right buttons and I'm doing you a favor. Th this is called rape. This is called assault. And so these guys, they, they, they take this leap and they think I'm doing her a favor. I mean, that's what she wants. That's what she really wanted anyway. No means yes, right? And uh, this is how we get into trouble. I'll, I'll, re I'll really break this down in a second. Um, so I told you about this, this acronym I came up with. It's called IDEAS, I-D-E-A-S. And so the first one is the introduction stage. Uh, these are five stages of pornography. The first stage is introduction. That's, that means the first time you were exposed to something sexual. Uh, maybe you were molested as a five, six, seven-year-old. Uh, maybe you saw a porn magazine at 10. 
maybe your first sexual experience was, I don't know, five years old or 15 years old, I don't know, but that's the introduction. That means Pandora's box. That means that door's open now. You've been exposed and you, that thing is open to you now. And once that door is open, it does not close. There's no un, unscrambling eggs. So um, the next stage, because we are all familiar with the intro. Many of us can look back and remember the first time I was exposed or introduced or opened to sex. The next stage is desensitization stage. Desensitization, that means that uh, I begin to become desensitized to what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing or doing. And uh, it can start real simply with, um, you know, holding hands with your girlfriend, you know, you're 12, 13, 14 years old and you held her hand or you put your arm around her or you got your first kiss and 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 then you it, it's not enough anymore. I mean, it's great, but then you always want more, which leads right into that E, that escalation stage. And that because you want more, you, sp you go farther and you spend more time doing it. So where desensitization is concerned, uh, what that often means is that we become desensitized to the things that, that we're watching and, and seeing. And uh, um, it's no longer just pictures of, of, of sex I need to see. Now I need to see actual animated movies and sounds. Now I need to see, now it's not just girls that I'm involved in. Now I want to see two girls. Now I want to see, you know, orgies. Now I want to see guys and girls. Now I want to see and we become desensitized and we also escalate uh, in, in the content and the time that we spend with this stuff. Um, and, and it's not rocket science here. It, it's just common sense. And we know we, we can feel these stages. We know these stages. And so we escalate in the, even things that we're viewing and that how far can you go as you escalate? You know, what can you do? Dude, there's this rule. I think it's called rule 32. I don't know where this came from. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's rule 32. And it says, uh, if it exists, there's pornography of it. If it exists, there's pornography of it. So basically that means we pervert everything sexually. Uh, and I, I kind of agree with this. And so um, as we escalate, we start gravitating into illegal stuff, you know, rape, force, underage, bestiality, and we just keep going and going and going and going because it's never enough because the love aspect is missing. This is all flesh and flesh can never fulfill. Okay, I said something there. Okay, so you got the introduction stage. Man, these glasses are itching my nose. Brand new glasses. Introduction stage, desensitization stage, escalation stage, and then there's this um, application stage. I'm sorry, the addiction stage, it's addiction. And so that means you get addicted to it and, and that becomes more important to you and you can't stop doing it and you're addicted. And so you gotta keep going, you gotta keep going. You can't stop. The last stage is the worst one because I gotta move on a little bit here. The last stage is the worst one. Introduction, desensitization, uh, escalation, addiction, and then solicitation. Solicitation, that means you actually apply what you're learning sexually. And this is the bad part right here. That means you've gone so far in porn that now you take everything that you've seen in porn and you tr try to apply it in your life. You try to bring fantasy and make that reality. You try to bring what's what that, that false message of porn and you try to bring it into reality. And this is where people get in trouble in their marriages. They get in trouble um, legally, maritally. Um, and it just, it just escalates and it gets worse. And then these people cross this line because... Um, they think they're doing women a favor. They they bought into this lie. I can't tell you how many guys did things because they thought that's what they were supposed to do. They thought that they were doing a woman a favor. And this is objectification, all this. We can talk about that. So, <clears throat> um, and one of the things that occurs when we're watching pornography is this thing called masturbation. Now, masturbation, if you, people argue and say masturbation is a good thing. Uh, it's, it's harmless, it's recreational, it's therapeutic to relieve stress, blah, 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 blah. God didn't say that. And some people say, well, the masturbation is not mentioned in the Bible. You don't know your Bible. Because masturbation is flesh. It's serving your flesh. Now, does the Bible talk about flesh? It warns us against our flesh. Grow up. And so, 
uh, think about this. I can argue that masturbation is the most selfish, self-centered thing a person can do because you do it to yourself. You cannot masturbate someone else. You can fondle someone else, but you cannot masturbate them. The word literally means, the Latin word, is manus and stuprari, two words, manus, hand, stuprari, to defile. To defile yourself, to abuse yourself with your hand. That's the original definition. And so this is the most selfish, self-centered thing you can do, serving your own flesh. And so there's that. There's this thing also, when guys have been masturbating so long, it's a thing now. It's a thing in medical. In medicine, it's called TMS, traumatic masturbatory syndrome syndrome. That means they've traumatized their penis so much that they can no longer function with their partner, with their wife, because uh, I know guys who can have sex with their wives and nothing happens. And they, they never achieve what's known as uh, climactic ejaculation. They can never climax or ejaculate. What they do, they can go watch porn and they can play with themselves and masturbate themselves and ejaculate like that. This is TMS, traumatic masturbatory syndrome. Um, so it is programming and it is conditioning. Now, a lot of times um, th there's another topic that comes up when, as we're flirting on the outskirts of this thing here is uh, with pornography is this thing uh, called erectile dysfunction. Um, I knew about erectile dysfunction and the root cause of this back in early 2000. Uh, and it, now science is catching up, studies, research are catching up now, and they're saying, oh, this is probably connected to, and then, then we started, when Vi Vicalis and Viagra, whatever them all, the, them uh, erectile dysfunction type of meds came out. Uh, um, first of all, why are people using those meds? I mean, let me break this down real slow for you. Why are people using these kind of meds to maintain an erection? It's not that they don't want sex. It's not that their testosterone levels are down. It means this is all wired. It's haywire right now. So what I mean by that, if I if I make this real simple, what I mean by that is what happens uh, in the majority of the cases here is that these guys, they're so immersed and, and saturated and flooded with sex, and they got these images flowing through, the, the, through their brain, their soul right here, and it's just – so many images. They're thinking, I, I'm not kidding. They're thinking about the girl. They're thinking about the first one. They're thinking about the older one. They're thinking about that mom they'd like to get with. They're thinking about uh, those goats. They're thinking about them, them midgets and those hobbits. So they're thinking about just all kind of stuff. It's just going on up here. And now it's time for them to have sex. And this thing is just already running and looping and going and going. And now they're actually trying to have sex. The problem is this is in it, the RPMs of what's going on up here is 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 so rapid that they cannot stop it and grab one fantasy one image they can't they can't even concentrate on reality right now it, this has become greater and so because they can't stop this and fix and and lock on one image they panic they have anxiety and they cannot maintain an erection because so, they're busy trying to choose which one they want to what want to grab and they can't and so they lose their erection which is why they've gravitated towards uh, erection uh, meds and so there's more to that. I get to, I get to that. Uh, one of the things I know is I've had these. Uh, um, see, I'm still talking about solicitation, and 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 how do we get there? Um, we've had. I'm I'm in the military community, and so I hope some of you uh, civilian community will understand this. We have. Uh, People that go out on float, it's usually like a six-month exercise. They leave their home port, and they'll go to, who knows, Europe. They can go to Asia. They can go all kinds of places for six months. Well, one of the things uh, um, men do, uh, old and young, not just junior enlisted, but staff, NCOs, and officers, the leaders, what they do, and they've done this time and time again, and they're still doing it, what they'll do before they go on float, they get ready. What I mean is that they'll go buy an external hard drive. It's either one ter terabyte, two terabyte, whatever. It's, a, it's a, an external hard drive. And what they'll do, their goal is to fill that thing up with porn because they're going to hit ports like uh, in Thailand or Korea or the Philippines or whatever. And their goal is to fill that stuff, that, that hard drive up with porn. Now, here's a question for you. And I've had guys who they've labeled that thing porn. And then they said, 
they filled that thing up halfway through their exercise. And so they went and bought another external hard drive and their goal was to fill that one up also. So this one was labeled porn one. This one is labeled porn two. And so they filled them up just on one, two terabyte hard drive, external hard drive. How many images can you get on that thing? And they filled it up. How many images can you get on that thing? I'd say billions of images. How many videos? Millions of videos. At least tens of thousands of videos. And here's my question to you. And some filled up two hard drives. Here's my question to you. Is there any way possible that 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 external hard drive, that data, those image, that imagery getting up into here, will that affect this in any way whatsoever? Of course it will. It's pollution. You're taking this pollution and putting it in. And so this is why we get immersed with this stuff. And this is why we this thing is just start racing. You can't turn it off. And I'll tell you something else. There's there's this there's this I know people who who men who who've talked to me and they're struggling with this thing. And and I'm gonna tell you right now, some of the the, the statistics say that about 60% of men in church struggle with uh, masturbation and pornography. I'm here to tell you it's more like 90%. 90%. One of the first things I ask people when I meet them, you can ask most about anybody I've talked to. One of the first questions I ask people when I meet them, I say, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, small talk. And then I just boom, jump right in there. Um, when's the last time you masturbated? They say, what? I say, how are you cowboys? They say, cowboys? What are you talking about cowboys? That's code word for when's the last time you masturbated? And you should see them. They're looking away and, they're, uh, 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 and you know they're going to lie to you. I said, no, look me in the eyes and swear to me right now, swear to me before before God and the Holy Spirit right now. Let the Holy Spirit bear you witness. When's the last time you masturbated? And then most of them will be honest because they're they're caught off guard and they're in shock. And they're, um, um, a couple of hours ago or yesterday, and somebody will say like, oh, maybe a week ago. He's lying. It was probably you know earlier today. And so the reason why I'm not trying to be perverted about this, and I tell them, I, I want you to get victory over this area of your life. And you can. Your flesh is in control. And what I'm talking about, there's this thing, I, I, a demonstration that I do. Uh, it's a visual demonstration. I've, I've oftentimes taken, you guys remember these cassette tapes like this? I've done this before. And I want to illustrate the bondage that comes with sinning, particularly sexual sins. One of the things that happens, you know, if you, if you took this right here, and let's say this represents sin. And it's, it's a cassette tape. It represents sin. So when somebody re- masturbates, watch porn one time, a Christian, anybody watches porn one time, what happens? You wrap them up one time, and then what happens? You think you can break out of that? <laughs> one time you broke out of that, right? So, But that's not what happens because we got away with it. What we do, we think, I need to, I can do it again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. And again, and I've done this in my demonstrations. And what happens, I'll, I'll get I'll get a big guy, you know, big, big, swole guy, like Christopher Luigi Adam. That dude was big, man. You know, big old chest, big old bench pressing, you know, 800 pounds and Shaq, Shaq bench pressing like a thousand pounds. Uh, go Navy. And what ends up happening, they can't break it. I'll wrap them up while I'm talking. I'll wrap them up in front of everybody right around the elbows. They're wrapped up like this and I'll wrap them up one time. Psh, they can get away with it piece of cake. I sinned. I got away with it. Not a big deal. But this bondage that occurs, I wrap them up. And I say, how many times do I have to wrap you up? How many times have you masturbated? And how many times do I have to wrap you up with just this this cassette tape? And then no one answers that. They're like oh, thousands, hundreds. And so I've got them wrapped up at least 30 times, sometimes only 20. And I try to tell them break out of it. Well, I tell them break out and they can't. And they're like this. And so what happened? What happened? It's called the law of yielding and bondage, Romans 6.16. It says, whatever you yield to, you become a slave to it. And so, and the more we yield to that, the more we become a slave to it. I know more men, because they masturbate daily, they're not even having sex with their wives daily. So what are they more connected to? They're more connected with their wives. And so, because they're more connected with their wives, it's, it's like you're supposed to 100% connect with your wife. But what ends up happening I disconnect from my wife and I'm connected to pornography. And a matter of fact, I'm more connected to pornography than I am my wife. So that has to change. How's that going to change? And while this guy's all tied up, it, it starts with this. While that guy's all tied up like this, the only way out, because he don't he doesn't have the strength, personal strength, physical strength, he doesn't have the strength to get out. He's in trouble. 
who is he going to call on? He's going to call on the Lord. And at, at that point, uh, all Mexicans carry knives. At that point, I'll break out my blade and I'll tell him, uh, um, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And their faces, they're like, well, he's going to cut me. And they're, they're, I got him by the ropes and everything. And so what I'll do, I'll say, in Jesus' name, Lord, forgive me for my sins. And I just start cutting them away. And they're free. And they get free just like that. Now, that's where it starts. There's so much more to this. In the next couple of weeks, I'll be talking about restoration. I, I just had a guy email me yesterday, uh, text me yesterday and ask me, you know, what do I do with my past? My, my, these, these, these experiences that I had, they keep haunting me and I don't want them anymore. What do I do? How, do, how am I restored? I'll get to that. But right now I'm going through, you know, some of the damage that, that's actually caused with the things that we do. So <clears throat> again, what ends up happening and we, we don't let this get by you. We get so immersed in filth and pollution that that begins to take priority in our lives. That fantasy replaces reality. That, that whatever the porn images that are up here, they become greater in our lives. And we think we buy into these lies. Remember the two lies that uh, womenly uh, are secretly nymphos and they got to have sex and that you can have sex without love. Well, you, you add all that up, what ends up happening in a guy's mind who's watching pornography, he begins to think, I sure would like to find someone, girl to do that. And I want a girl to do this. And I want a girl to do that. And so you're looking for that girl to do that. And that becomes your measuring stick of a good woman. And you, you're way out there. Um, I can't tell you how many guys I've met that have, that have done things because they thought that's what they were supposed to do. Uh, we had one guy who, who thought that uh, when he got married, he thought he can go King Kong on his wife. And he hurt her on their wedding night. He, 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 not just physically, he hurt her mentally. And it took years. Man, I can't tell you how many people have been destroyed, how many marriages have been destroyed because of date rape and this kind of aggression. And one big guy, this dude was huge, man. He's probably 6'4". He's probably, dude was like 240, 250, man. Dude was swole. He wasn't fat at all. And he came in, um, he came in, after watching an episode of like these years ago, um, uh, Dateline NBC or something like that, one of them uh, documentary shows that, that comes on the news at night. And uh, the guy went, was uh, talking about date rape. And my friend came to work the next morning, practically in tears. He said, I saw that show and it's just, it just occurred to me, the reality, the truth. I have raped every woman that I've been on a date with. And he was broken down crying. He said, I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I thought that's what they wanted. No meant yes. And he just was sobbing. He says, I, I think I raped every one of them. What do you, what do, you do with that? And so I, I've got guys now that are waking up um, and m maybe not to that extent, but they're waking, they're waking up. And they're 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 contacting the, the past women they've been with and apologizing. And these women are saying, you know, I'm I'm so glad you called because I didn't understand what happened. I didn't know why you, you just laid with me and you disappeared, um, or we were boyfriend and girlfriend and you left me for something else. I didn't understand. And sometimes that's that, that's a good ending because both of them forgive each other and they pray and then they, they move on with their lives. They get closure. Other times it's not so bad. It's it's they're still they still harbor unforgiveness and pain. I understand they do, and so all because we got sex thing wrong, particularly guys. Now girls can sin sexually too. I got to say this because um, I know a bunch of the guys are out there saying we're not the only ones. Yeah, but you're the ones. Um, uh, where's my proof? My proof is um, just just look at the statistics about men. The differences between men and women. Um, between men and women, um, just death row. They're, they're, uh, between men and women on death row in America today, what percentage is men and what percentage is women? I'd say 98, 96, 98% of all people on death row, men. Who's accused of violent crimes? Men, overwhelmingly, higher percentage. Um, who leads the porn industry? Who do are women? Yeah, they're a small percentage of leaders in the porn industry. They don't control the porn industry. 95% of them are men. What about the drug industry? Who's at the top of that, that chain in the drug industry? It's men. 
prostitution industry, men. What about those madams? That's maybe less than 10%. It's men Who, who's running governments. It's men who's destroying governments. It's men. It's usually men. There's a mantle of leadership on men, a mantle of strength on men. The problem is most men today are using their strength, their desires, their abilities, and going in the wrong direction. This is why I say it's on men. Um, so what I was getting at was was these these men need to repent, get before the Lord, and and just humble themselves and say. I messed some things up, and then we need to go back and make amends. We need to be able to be trusted again. But the, the reason we haven't is because we've gotten so far away from God. Men have gotten so far away from God that they can't be trusted. I'm telling you right now, men cannot be trusted unless they know the Lord, unless they're vibrant, humble, growing relationship with the Lord. That's the key right there. Um, I have to say this. Where those stages of pornography are concerned, those five stages— introduction desensitization escalation addiction and solicitation that can that those stages can be done in a negative way or be recognized in a positive way because the same principles can be done in a positive way i'm introduced to the things of god and then i become desensitized to sin and then i escalate in the things of God and a hunger and a passion for God. Then I become addicted to, to praying. I become addicted to reading my Bible. I become addicted to sharing. And then I begin to um, uh, solicit, uh, I go, I share the gospel. I go looking for souls. See, so so the, the same principles of ideas can be bad or good. That's why Romans 6.16 again talks about whatever you yield to, you become a slave to it. You can yield to sin and you become a slave to sin, or you can yield to righteousness and become a slave to righteousness. The choice is ours. Um, I recognize that there many of us are damaged. We've been exposed, but there is help. I'm telling you right now, there's help. There's this thing, I used to struggle with this, and I and I know there was this thing called, um, I used to wonder, how can I get rid of these images? Because if they're up here, they're gonna be up here forever. Huh? And, well, there's a couple of things that happen. You can choose not to dwell, not to think on those things. However, I can sit here right now, and if I think long enough and hard enough, I can conjure up some of those old images, some of the experiences. But I have to choose. I have to take every thought captive. That's, the Bible says that in Corinthians, to bring, bring into captivity, captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's one. The other thing, um, physiologically, um, synaptically, there's a thing called synaptic pruning. And when when you first try to stop doing porn. This is the thing I know. You can do anything for 30 days. I'm talking to you. You can do anything for 30 days. And this is this is it right here. If, if you're having trouble with this, then get before the Lord and, 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 and pledge 30 days of purity. I'm talking about you husbands too. Pledge 30 days of purity. You know, no more porn for 30 days. And what will happen, your testosterone levels are not going to decrease. You're still going to have that, that itch, that sexual need. But instead of chasing it in porn, that porn, you say no more to porn, you'll, you'll, you'll be hungry for your wife. That will definitely increase. And this is healthy. This is a good thing. And so, uh, like I said, the challenge is to go cold turkey, get off porn for 30 days. You can do it. And what happens, one of the things that does happen, because I used to think, well, but, but these are my proclivities. This is, this is, this is my fantasy. This is what I, what I gravitated towards. What's going to happen? Science has proven. There's this thing called synaptic pruning which means your synapses that fire at that memory that fire at that what ends up happening uh they begin to break break and you you don't have that 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 urge anymore you don't have that desire anymore it just kind of goes away the memories are still there the experiences are still there you can't undo that however that that, that desire begins to diminish and it just goes away but it it, it takes effort on your part and and helping asking god to help you to break these things. Um, do you really want to? That's what it comes down to. Do you really want to be free from this stuff? And so pornography, God warns us against pornography. Very clear all throughout scripture. Uh, any kind of sinful sex is pornographic. Any kind of sinful sex. And, uh, uh, I, and I was talking about women, how women sin sexually also. Uh, um, in every woman's battle, there's a, there's a, an accompanying book to every man's battle is called Every Woman's Battle. 
I recommend reading it. My warning to the guys has always been, if you read this book, don't get mad at women for their innermost thoughts. Because we, we did this in a brig one time. We started going through every woman's battle. And immediately the men, the prisoners, they got mad at what the women were sharing. They, they were upset. They're like, oh, these, these, these sluts, they're, they're whores. Oh, what are they? Like, Dude, wait a minute. You know, have, are you guilty of these same things? Well, yeah. Well, why are you pointing fingers? And, and haven't you shared openly and honestly? Why can't they share openly and honestly? And so I had to lay down some ground rules. Let these women share their stories. They're just they're, they're trying to communicate. And so some of these women, they said things like um, things that they were introduced to. And one woman's account in this, in the every woman's battle, one woman's account was along the lines that she said, um, I was with guy A and I broke up with him. Um, and then I ended up, and now I'm with guy B. And guy B uh, couldn't touch me the way guy A would. And so I'm there with guy B and we're, we're touching and we're touching. And But guy A used to touch me in a really good way he knew how to touch my button and uh um and so guy b he's fumbling he's failing i'm trying to guide him but it's not working and he gets upset guy b got upset and he got mad and this is what the woman wrote he got mad and he threw up his hands and he left the room he said do it yourself boom and he left the room guys hate to fail especially where sex is concerned guys hate to fail and so what ends up happening now the woman she she confesses right there and she admits while I was laying there, I was concerned yet relieved. I was concerned that I hurt his feelings, and I'm going to have to address that um, sometime later in the night. Uh, I hurt his feelings. We gotta have, I'm concerned. i got to address that. But I'm also relieved. Why was she relieved? Because she said, now that he's gone, I can do it myself. Translation, I don't need you for this. That's this right here, connected to my life and porn. And then what ends up happening, I, I, I have more sex with porn than I do with my wife. Translation, I don't need you, honey, for this. I, I, I got what I need. This is easier. This is the path of least resistance. This one, you know, we got to talk. We got to cuddle. I got to be nice to you. This one, it's just easy. It's a mouse click away. You know what I'm talking about. And so women are guilty too. Men are guilty. We're all guilty of this. Um, but God, but Jesus Christ. Tell you right now, he's the solution to all of this. Without Jesus Christ, we're all in trouble. Um, and and when I, as I close, I got to tell you, I'm not here to throw stones. A lot of you, I've, he I've heard this over the years. They feel like this is hate speech, and and they're getting their feelings hurt. And if you're still here listening to this, you need to know this. Um, I have to wear this before I can share this which means God took me through the ringer and the fire and all of this stuff before I can share it with you because, and I'm still going through. And so don't think that I'm, I'm here bringing condemnation. If you feel any kind of condemnation, if you feel anything, it's probably conviction. Conviction is healthy because the Bible says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. However, there should be conviction. And if you're being convicted by anything I'm talking about, I'm not the one bringing conviction. It's it's the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you through that healing process. Let the Holy Spirit just be humble and admit and confess, say, God, I'm sorry. I missed it here. And I'm guilty of this. And, and be specific about that thing as you're praying to the Lord and, and, and have God restore you. So um, I think I covered a lot there. I, I wanted to wrap up. The effect of sex on our soul, this is our soul, and specifically pornography. What pornography does is this. Pornography conditions, trains, programs. It's ungodly. It's wicked. It's destructive. And so there, you, you shouldn't have any of this in your life at all. Get Run from pornography. Run from sexual sins. And uh, um, that's just a warning from God. He gives us permission to run from that. Um, so let me pray over you. And I'll wrap this up. So, Father, I thank you right now. Oh, by the way, what, the reason why I told you that, I wanted to wrap up all this soul stuff because next week I'm going to be talking about sex and the spirit. What is the effect of sex on our spirit, man? Now, we're going to be talking about demons next week. You know, God versus demons and not necessarily angels, but God versus Satan. What does that have to do with anything in sex? It has everything to do with sex because fundamentally 
we're spirit beings. Fundamentally, we are a spirit being. And so what we're doing with our sex affects our spirit, man, wholly. So I'll get into that next week. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I boldly come before your throne of grace and I present these men and women before you, Lord. Father, right here, right now, I stand in the gap and I intercede for these men and women knowing, Father, that your Holy Spirit within me, Father, gives me permission and authority to take hold against the evils that would attempt to hold these men and women in bondage. And so, Father, I unwrap them right now. I speak that they're unwrapped from the bonds of wickedness, and I take my shield of faith and I quench every fiery dart of the adversary aimed at these men and women. Father, you said, whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So in the name of Jesus, I bind their body, soul, and spirit to your will and purposes, O Lord. I bind their will, intellect, and emotions to your will, God. And I bind these men and women to the truth and to the blood of Jesus. I loose every old wrong, uh, 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 every old wrong, ungodly pattern of thinking, idea, desire, belief, habit, and behavior from these men and women's lives. And I tear down every stronghold associated with these things. And I loose any stronghold in their lives that has been justifying and harboring hard feelings against anyone. Father, I loose these strongholds of unforgiveness, fear, and distrust from these men and women's lives. Father, every enslaving, every enslaving yoke is broken over their lives because these men and women will not become the slave of anything or be brought under his power except you, Lord. I, I speak this in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that these men and women have escaped the snare of the devil who has held them captive. And these men and women now do your will, which is to glorify you. Father, thank you so much for your ministering spirits to come and provide the necessary help for these men and women. Satan shall not get an advantage over these men and women in Jesus' name because I plead the blood of the lamb over them. And because Satan and his cohorts are overcome by that blood and your word. And so, Father, I tread on all the power of the enemy on their behalf. These men and women are delivered from this present evil world and the powers of darkness, and they are translated into the kingdom of your dear son. Father, I ask you now to fill those vacant places, Father, in these men and women with your redemption, with your word, with your Holy Spirit, with your love, with your wisdom, with your righteousness and your revelation knowledge. Thank you, Father, that Jesus was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Therefore, Satan's works are destroyed in these men and women's lives. And these men and women walk in the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so as I wrap this up, share your thoughts, share this video, uh, share your throwbacks and support us prayerfully and financially if you can. Uh, just, just, just get this word out there. You know, it's good word. Give it to people because they need to hear it. And it's going to be controversial, but it, it, you can deal with it. So as I close, give someone high five right here, right now. Turn around to somebody. I know somebody's there. Give them high five and say, hey, what's the big idea?